Oh, that Neil. He finally is healing. Good. It actually does look smaller. That's good. I'll tell you what. I want to see Bailey and, and Essa in a bit. Oh. Hello, everyone. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And today's Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown and Impact Wrestling Show. I think this is a. Oh no, there's one more. This is brought to you by. Marvel. You folks are marvelous. Where it all. Oh, there's some more. That's always a good sign. Again, as always. Happy Halloween! Yes. Again, it's a red wine and pizza Friday. Therefore, it's time to talk about two fairly entertaining shows. One so much, so much more better than the other, though. And that is Friday Night SmackDown and the Red Wine and Impact Red Wine and Pizza Impact Show. Let's start off with SmackDown. Um, there's not really a lot to cover. I'm not going to go through all the draft stuff. It's boring. There are reasons why hobos drink red wine on Fridays and for drafts. Ooh, actually, I'll do that the second part of the show. Because that was all during Impact. So serious. So SmackDown, SmackDown was actually fairly okay. Parts of it were really entertaining. Parts of it not so entertaining. Um, they do have a nice open. They have ACDC, and with the recent storyline of Lana and Rusev and Bobby Lashley, do you really think you should play? ACDCs, we're going to have a good time. Especially showing a picture of Lana. Whoa! You know who's having a good time, folks. So it starts off, um, the stipulations of this first match, a match with stipulations, I like that. Or at least, consequences. It was Roman Reigns, with his pyro, which looks good, takes on Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins obviously representing SmackDown. Rollins representing Raw. Winner means their brand gets first choice in the draft. This is actually a pretty good, mo pretty good match. Um, there is, of course, some history between the two, both of them being in the Shield. Um, whenever Seth wrestles someone in the Shield, and this happened when... Dean Ambrose, I remember his name, was wrestling, and they had a pay-per-view. And I'll forget what pay-per-view it was, but it was terrible. Because for some reason, Seth Rollins starts off in a rest hold mania. Seth, you've seen this out of you before. It's not good. So he uses the match of the headlock, and it's pretty good. And until it starts with a brawl, like... Kill him, Roman. Kill. 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 Because Roman starts to beat up Seth. It's like Roman's had enough of it, which is pretty good. Uh, Roman Reigns sells the power. He does that power bomb, which is really good. Roman Reigns in this match is really the powerhouse. He does mo mo more of the brawling, which is weird because for the most part, he's the face. Indeed, a roll reversal. Um, then they were missing finishers left and right. They... Again, they know each other's style. They know what their finisher is, so that kind of makes sense. Um, Seth, I think, he just has rest holds. They're, then they get to their finishers. They kind of know all their finishers. Somewhat makes sense. Remember, these are the, really the two strongest competitors. Until, ah, 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 the Fiend shows up from the ring. Hell in the Cell Kane style, which is fun and different, and I like it. And he puts Seth Rollins and drags him down. 
beneath the mat for a while. And then the lights go in and out again, and Seth Rollins teleports above the mat. He looks freaked out. I'll tell you what. Even though it's a the the fittest, because Seth Rollins wins because he got because Roman Reigns got DQ'd because the Fiend showed up and laid his hands upon Seth Rollins' foot. The DQ finished. But honestly, this was a good, dusted, cheeseburger match. And you can thank Fiend for that. If not, it would have been a dull old ham sandwich. So then they get to some of the draft rules. Um, you can either pick individuals or tag teams. You can have individuals. Uh, Raw gets three picks. SmackDown gets two. Man, it's just I don't want to hear about rules and boring administrative stuff during wrestling. Then we hit Shorty Gable versus King Corbin. Really? You're going to go with this? Again, the third time? Or is it the fourth time in three weeks? Or is it five times in five? Wait a second. Is it five times in five weeks? When was King of the Ring? It might have been five times in five weeks. WWE. Y you have nothing else to think of? Just ask this guy, Hobo Tom, for ideas. I'd give you something. But now it's... um. Shorty Gable, God, that sounds terrible. Versus King Corbin. So maybe those things about Shorty G. All right. Yes, if you read my list, it was something very bad. I said, "Which I'll get to you later in the show." Um. So uh, Gable, he's smarter. He's more technical based. Uh, Corbin's more of the brawler. Kind of, kind of the brawn of the match. Uh, Corbin, again, for part of the match, just clubs. Poor little Gables. Uh, I think Corbin threw Gable over the table. I don't know if the table. Sometimes these tables no sell. These tables go into business for themselves. Uh, Corbin jumped on the table, jumped on to King Corbin. The splash on him. Corbin, uh, Corbin's good. He has the same move set, although he did have. That new, like, twisty slam thing. That looked good, where he picked him up and, like, twisted him in the air. I don't know if it was meant to be that. Whatever it was, it looked better. It looked new. I like it. Um, and then, again, Chet, uh, Chet, Shorty Gable does the Rolling Germans connect the third one. He's too exhausted. Baron Corbin wins. It's a ham sandwich. Again, being fed the same match after same match week week after pay per view after pay per view it just gets so long. Why did I get claw hand? That's weird. Maybe it's my lack of sleep last night or today. Oh, weird. Like claw hand, or like the thumb like goes like. So, so that was just a ham sandwich of a match. Um, I will say this: it was better than the King of the Ring and Hell in the Cell match. Not saying much though. Then it was a Tyson Fury. Promo in the back and Brock recap where you did a Kofi Kingston. Good for Kofi. Even better for Brock. Makes Brock interesting. Again, the one person you fear is Kane Velasquez who, who legitimately beat him up and just physically pummeled him. And then we have the New Day because uh, come out for a promo. I like this. They give two deserving women who have cancer and remission a woman's belt. I like that. That's a good thing. 
Because I know at a friend's house, she got her U.S. title stolen. It took the belt. That's unforgivable. But so that's kind of a that nice, fuzzy, warm, feel-good moment. I will always, I will never say anything bad. Or, or yeah, I'll never say anything bad about a fuzzy, feel-good moment. In fact, you know what? To that fuzzy, feel-good moment, I drink to those ladies. Salud! Then we have New Day versus Club. Um, the club started off kind of strong until Kofi gets the hot tag. He was the WWE champion, so I guess I'll give him a little bit of a break. The hot tag, um, AJ Styles. He and AJ Styles go out for a while. It was fun. And there was some move. I'll tell you what. I don't know. I forget what it was. That looked like it just hurt, though. Again, it was a good tag team action by both teams. I just don't like the fact that they booked the club so weakly. Although AJ looks great. I mean, he does counter the SOS. He does not, however, counter the trouble in paradise. AJ Styles eats the pin. It's a ham sandwich. I mean, they could have really done away with most of these matches because we've seen them over and over and over again. They could have put something fresh in it. It would have been a lot better. And then we have another rematch. I thought, away they, did. I thought they did away with rematches. WWE, you're being tricky. It was Charlotte Flair. Woo! Versus Evil Bailey. Oh, Evil Bailey shows up, beats up her Bailey buddies with. She knows how to use a kendo stick now. Bravo, Bailey. You've learned the use of a kendo stick. Indeed. I shall give you golf claps. Golf claps. I don't even know if you can hear that on the mic. But Bailey's getting golf claps. Uh, Bailey uses kendo sticks. Bailey curses. So this was a rematch. Um, Evil Bailey got a haircut too. Oh, you know what that means? It's a pretty term, and there's going to be a title change. Oh, wow, is this predictable? GWWE, make. Make it at least harder for me to guess this stuff. But it was a, it was a good match. Um, Evil Bailey with a haircut. Um, oh, I, <laughs> I mean, Bailey. She starts to do more heel tactics. Why does. I guess if you drink. I guess if you whine enough and cry enough, you get matches. Uh, yeah, so so again, Bailey's kind of more heel. Flair, Flair, Charlotte Flair flies. She doesn't do the moonsault. I don't think she did the moonsault. I don't know if I stepped away for that. If that was during a break, she did a suicide dive onto Bailey. Print. Not bad. Um, Flair again. She was bleeding from the lip or something because there was like a little trickle of blood over here. And her daddy, Ric Flair, the man who I dusted Rose had many matches against, many bloody matches against. And, and we turned our foreheads into teeth greater meat. And oh, so much blood in those matches. Solid Flair finally learned how to bleed. Woo! Looks like she like got a cut lip. Or she bit something. She like bit her lip or bit her tongue. I don't know. It wasn't terrible. Although if, if Bailey did, if Bailey did something to Charlotte that really made her bleed from the oh, that would have been so cool. But I mean, she's definitely working as the heel. Um, 
Kiss a belly to belly. Charlotte Flair kicks out to that. Good to Charlotte Flair. Finally, someone kicked out of that awful finisher to the belly to belly. So freaking bad. I don't know why that's the finisher. Um, Bailey did hit the macho elbow. I refuse to call it her flying elbow. It is the macho elbow, folks. And then to hold Charlotte Flair down, she, I guess, held her hair down? Heel Bailey wins in a 50 50 booking match. They really needed to do this. I don't know. I guess it's okay now. I don't know. Heel Bailey is still better than goody goody Bailey, I guess. So I'll say eh, it's a cheeseburger match. And then they talk about how Raw is going how Raw is going to continue the draft. The Raw really the draft really took up most of the show with a couple of matches in between. I don't know. I just there was no to me there was no continuity between it. They showed the draft rooms. I don't need to see that. Overall, the SmackDown not the best SmackDown. This is a ham sandwich. Wow. You know what? I was. Ailey got that wedgie. The kind of what's her face got? What's her name? Where is it on my list? Where is it? No. No. Yeah. Katie Forbes got that wedgie. Yeah. Bailey with a wedgie. Oh. You did not hear that. But now it's time to move on, folks. Time to talk about some Impact Wrestling. Because Impact Wrestling is going to be on one more Friday. And it switches to Tuesday. So Tuesdays are going to be interesting for me. So again, to start off this show, because it was way more entertaining than SmackDown. I got some shout-outs for people that interacted with me on the Discord. Peace, Saturn's hairpiece. You, sir. Got that six count.
than the usual cast of characters. See here. Marky Mahart! You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. Could not think of name. <laughs> I almost like that. That's kind of funny. I like that. That's a really good name. I'm just pausing for time. I need more time. You, sir, have that brief box briefcase going. Jericho's bubbly. Crawl back to that bubbly, sir. <laughs> Why is Waldo? You, sir, keep on winning by that dirty pin. And then, Blaze, first of all, sir, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Although you did get the answer wrong. The answer was all of them. An orgy. So therefore you, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band. So let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. Not necessarily the best show, but much more entertaining than SmackDown. SmackDown, I don't know. This week, again, watching like lawyer stuff take place, not good TV. Again, to start off Impact Wrestling, we have Ace Austin wearing an Austin 316 shirt. Because you know what Ace Austin 316 says? Because he takes on Eddie Edwards. And I guess this is for a spot in the Fatal Five Way or the latter version of the X Division Championship. Um, I'm surprised that this match by itself wasn't on a pay per view. This could have been on a paper. This this could have been one of those like hardcore grudge matches. Oh, it would be cool if they say that until after November, for December. 
I can do a live stream of it because my corner setting will be done in the at the end of November. But it starts off with Ace Austin playing tonsil hockey with two Las Vegas. Um, no, not that phrase. Women. Hawkers. Uh, then Eddie Edwards just beats up, tries to beat up Ace Austin. Ace, Ace Austin actually does a pretty good do job of beating up Eddie Edwards for a change. Um, then Eddie Edwards does go after the uh, the injured arm of Ace Austin. For the most part, Ace Austin con controls most of the match. Um, Eddie Edwards tries, <laughs> tries to use Kenny the Kendo stick. Um, that's because Reno Scum shows up. Eddie Edwards, I don't know. He needs <laughs> to leave. <laughs> he needs to actually realize, I'm sorry. No one wins with a blue thunder bomb. That's an El Generico Chikara moment at best. Uh, there were some other good things. There was a ref bump that got, uh, they got pulled up by Reno Scum. Kind of admonishes them. Doesn't disqualify them. Uh, then, of course, is when Eddie Edwards has him pinned after the Boston knee party. And then, of course, there's always the loaded brace with a piece of iron. Ace Austin nails him with that. Ugh. It was a good match. Actually, it was fairly entertaining. Impact just puts on really good entertaining matches for some reason, though. This is a good cheeseburger of a match. And probably because after the match, Reno Scum hits like a super curb stomp on Eddie Edwards. That'll be interesting to see what happens. Then we have a tight rosemary promo. Those two are just pure gold. Does he hit squad? The next match, take on the Rascals in six man tag action, which not having having named people in a six man tag is actually rare in impact, so this is pretty good. Does he hit 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 squads? Starts out how but once the rascals get their match the pace they want, um, a lot more fast pace action, rascals actually do pretty good. However, that with that ref dis distraction by Shiva, the other two of Desi Hit Squad beat up poor Wentz, and then uh, no, not Wentz, but some, the other guy. Uh, then was a hot tag to Wentz, and I just learned this. Is this true? Is Wentz a dirty pot smoking, filthy pro wrestler doing things to? My princess, Kimberly. Oh! Inquiring minds like Hobo Tom want to know. Because I remember when I saw my princess, Kimberly. She's still my princess, Kimberly. Not Abby Lathan, whatever stupid name. Stupid! Stupid! Name WWE gave her. Abby Lath. <laughs> princess Kimber. Lee, or they called her like Kimberly. Actually, that's still not bad. So at least I could chant, "You're my princess." I like that. Uh, then the Rascals again, the, the fast double team. They're good. Shira, however, has a two-person choke slam. Again, he's the monster of the two. So then it became a spot pass for everyone. Uh, Shira eventually used Wentz as a weapon. That's pretty good. Uh, he hits whatever. Move on Wentz. Drags over Rahu. Raji, I forget. To cover him. And the W Hit Squad win. Heels win. This was a fun match. I was thoroughly entertained. This is a cheeseburger match. Then next up, another couple of promos every so often about uh, Bound for Glory coming up. Oh, it was Jordan Grace. 
versus Van Damme's wife. Oh, I have so much to say about that. But actually, the next match was Just Havoc versus Ty Valkyrie. Um, Daniel Dash was there on commentary. This would be interesting because this is not necessarily the Go-Home show. So I wonder if Tenille is actually going to get that Knockouts Championship belt off of Taya. And then would Taya join her husband in WWE? Ooh. That would be pretty good. Taya's a really good wrestler, too. She could, hold, she could probably hold her on with anyone. But so Tenille's actually with some commentary. I mean, Havoc is just out muscles for Taya. I mean, Taya looks small compared to Jessica Havoc, and Taya's a pretty, pretty cut, but big booby, big booty woman. But she's kind of trim though, so that's pretty cool. Jessica Havoc just looks mean and tough. Although you never know, those mean, tough women, they, 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 they become snuggle bugs in the bed. Yeah, I like that thought. Um, Taya again. <laughs> the funny moment is imagine she just like stomps on. On Jessica Havoc's boobies. That has to hurt. And then Johnny Bravo eventually does pull the ref off when Jessica Havoc goes for a pin. He gets beat up for your, for her efforts. It's the DQ finish. You do not lay hands on set of fizzle. Ty Valkyrie, you and your mom out of here. Jessica Havoc, you win. So Jessica Havoc wins, and it's a dusty old ham sandwich. And then Teal, the next week, is wrong. Decided to beat some Jessica Havoc a little bit. Teal Dashwood has to then beat up Ty, Ty Valkyrie. So we'll see what happens. It's not the good show, and I don't know if WWE math actually applies to Impact Wrestling. We'll see. Then the North come out, cut a promo. They're always good. But it's Moose, 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 Moose. Takes on Stephen Bonner. And Stephen Bonner looks jacked. He got in shape. Whoa. Uh, Frank Trigg is at ring ringside. I'll tell you what, Frank Trigg is really good on commentary. He's on point. He's honest. He's like, yeah, that would suck if Moose lost this match. But, but he needs some competition to hone his skills. It makes sense. He said it would suck if he lost, but he needs this match to get ready for Ken Shamrock. Commentator who makes sense? Who's not Don Callis? Indeed. Or Matt Striker. Or Vampiro. Indeed, indeed, indeed. A Bonner? He's, he's actually really good in the ring. Right now, he's probably loving it. He's like, oh, this is fun. I miss this stuff. I think I busted open the hard way. I didn't see him blade, do the blade job or anything. As far as I know, he could have hit himself against something sharp, though. I mean, he's probably cuckoo like that. Moose is good. Um, Bonnie goes in the finisher. Which is good. Uh, uh, move out. Uh, Moose kicks out, and he used the ref. He threw the ref into... Stefan Bonner, when he was climbing the, the ropes. Eh, eh, eh. It's a DQ finish. But it was good. It told a story. He beat up Stephen Bonner. And, and Stephen Bonner said, Hey, you there, Frank Freak, stay out. And Ken Samra came in and beat up Moose a little bit. So that was good. So, therefore, this match is a cheeseburger of a match. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, this hark is packed with damn WWE brawn panties matches, but they were in wrestling gear. I'll tell you what, I want to see Bailey get that kind of wedge. Oh, so we have Katie Forbes, Rob Van Dam's wife, versus Jordan Grace. I'll tell you what, I thought this was going to be terrible. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be because Katie Forbes actually knows how to wrestle. She learned something from Rob Van Dam. <laughs> Again, it was basic stuff. The fact that she could do a headlock takedown 
She knew how to get out of leg scissors. She knew how to sell punches. She knew how to sell elbows. She could give forearms. It wasn't anything super complex. She's not doing a Lucha Destroyer anytime soon. Soon, She's not doing a five-star frog splash. But oh my gosh, so she does the five-star frog twerk. And then <laughs> she just dollar bills to everyone from Money Machines. That was all her entrance. Oh, she can shape what, what the creator, gave, what God gave her. I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Grace gives her the ultimate wages. Listen, folks. Katie Forbes is not wearing that much ring gear. After Jordan Grace gave her that wedgie, she was wearing less ring gear. Oh, she picked her up by her bottoms. I think Katie Forbes enjoyed that. Oh, I mean, she took $50 of those $70 shorts and stuck them where only Rob Van Dam knows. Well, that was fun, though. Um, she also knows how to eat a Michinoku driver, or in this case, a, a Jordan, a, a Gracie driver or Jordan driver, whatever it is. She took the pin, but I'll tell you what. Wrestling wise, it was a ham sandwich. Entertainment value, though. That's what you're going after, folks. Your entertainment dollar value. If you're entertained, if this prof professional wrestling match makes you smile, that's the thing. Jordan Grace, when you did that to her, this is a cheeseburger match. And if I was a depraved hobo, it probably would have been less. But boy, was I entertained, though. Oh, all that booty in the ring. So, I digress. Um, I'll tell you what. I want to see Bailey in bikini bottoms take that wedge what takes to take that wedgie. Oh, that would be so cool. Uh then Johnny swears in the back. Yes. He has to say so. I could show you some some things there. Miss Forbes. Oh and Jordan Jordan Grace just shoves him down. He's like, I like it rough. Oh, is that going to be the next intergender match? Johnny Swinger versus Jordan Grace? <laughs> or to start off, Katie Forbes? Yes! Uh, then there's another thing. Falapa! And TJP, also known as Falapis Donuts. And they're training for their match, so that's pretty fun. Then I guess in the kind of the main event it was uh, Jake Chris. I always got the two of them confused. And Madman Fulton taking on Daga and Tessa Blanchard. <laughs> and it was funny. Um, again, the Katie Forrest match. She was shooting like 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 Katie dollars out of her her money guns. Some fan picked up all the Katie dollars. And when Tessa came on her stage, she does her little pose. Or I'm, I don't even know how she does it. Let's see if I can do this. Ooh. Some fan threw her all the Katie Forbes dollars. <laughs> stay classy. Oh, wait a second. We're in Las Vegas. Can't tell them to stay classy. What am I thinking of? <laughs> but, oh, um. So Jay Chris is in the ring. He's Daga starts off. He's like, I want her. So Tessa Blanchard. Blanchard. Acquiesces, tag, uh, Daga tags, Daga tags Tessa in. J. Chris tags in Madman Fulton in the blind tag, and you can see Tessa's mouth saying, 
or as I shall say, you are such a P U S S Y. Yes, just imagine that. That was, that was funny to watch your mouth. Yeah! yeah. Uh, Daga actually does pretty good because, again, Tessa, Madman Full, Madman Full just beats her up. He's just a monster, so that's kind of ex it's, 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 it's expected. So I'm not. I'm not offended by a man beating up a woman by a professional female wrestler getting beat up by a professional male wrestler because, wait, this is professional wrestling. This is supposed to what's going on in the ring. It's not like he, like, slapped her a thousand times. It's not like she didn't slap him either. But she held her own for a little bit. Um, but eventually gets tagged again. He gets caught by Fulton. Again, they're outside the ring. Daga tries to jump on Fulton, gets caught, goes right into the ring post. Uh, Tessa eventually does clean house. <laughs> oh, baby! Ohio versus everyone come in. Because Tessa does hit the Magnum onto Jay Chris, gets the pin. I think it was pin or DQ because Dave Chris got involved. Or the other two. I got the two of them confused. Then, oh, baby! Cleans house. Um, Brian Cage eventually comes back. Because OVE beats up everyone, he's upset. He he yeah, he just beats up the two Chris brothers. F five Fulton. And I'll tell you what, at this point it was a cheeseburger of a match. But then of course Cage is looking for where Sammy is. Where is Sammy Callahan? Sammy Callahan's behind you with a steel chair, buddy. Wax him in, in the back. Two low blows. They hanked up Brian Cage in the ring ropes. Sammy Callahan brings up the Callahan slugger. And Melissa Santos, who's like a little band-aid over her head. Trust me, if she got hit with a ball, she'd have more than a band-aid over her head. But she she gets in front of Brian Cage. Sammy Callahan's having none of it. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Pile drives. Melissa Santos. E C W style. In front of her husband, the machine, Brian Cage. Oh, I half expected Brian Cage to break those handcuffs. He did not. But whoa. You want to talk about poking the hornet's nest there, Sammy Callahan. You know what, Melissa Santos? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. And I'll tell you what, this show, this was so good. Oh, this was a cheeseburger impact. Which is actually better than SmackDown. So WWE not only has to be worried about AEW. AEW was good this week. Again, you can watch my review of it. It wasn't as strong as the first week. The first week, the first week was, of course, the, the first show ever. So that was that was Wowzers. This, I'll tell you what. If WWE wasn't on TV households on cable, and Impact was. Impact might give both AEW and WWE a run for their money. They have good they have good storytelling, funny backstage segments, decent if not good wrestling. Every so often there's something that makes you go, whoa. Again, I'd like to see who was it? Oh, just think oh, if Sasha Banks started to slap around Becky Lynch and then Seth Rollins pile drive Sasha Banks. Indeed. Oh, then everyone have a good night. And remember, folks, if you are going to partake of the red wine, beer, or how much is left? More.